we created this transfer student link, which is right here on the library website. So what I would highly okay. recommend that you do is um, bookmark it, keep it, because it's right. a page that is specifically for you. So it gives you information about um, what services that the library has, because uh, you've probably within now your transfer student experience, we are working on changing that, but there, you probably came to the library to do transfer student stuff, but you actually didn't talk to a librarian or tour the library. Right, um, right. Belk Library is pretty fantastic. We had about 1.2 million people walk in and out of the library last year. So it is one of the most popular buildings on campus. It is also one of the only ones that are open 24 five so the library is open seven days a week we are open mm -hmm. over breaks um with the exception of holidays and uh you can basically on monday through thursday it's open 24 hours friday it's open from nine to nine and then saturday 10 to six and then sunday it's pretty much 12 30 to you know the next morning so we're one of the few places that are are open all the time okay so, Within the transfer student guide, um, basically the website gives you just basic information about who we are. Here's some fast facts about the library, um, some quick links that you might be interested in, such as research guides, movies, DVDs, um, the digital media studio, the tech center. We have some amazing digital and tech resources here that a lot of students just aren't aware of. Um, so I'll be talking about those as well. Um, probably the most important is anytime you need help, these are the options. You can call us, you can do chats. We have uh, chats that are monitored as long as the library is open by professional librarians. You can text the library at any time, you can email them. What's cool about the chat is that it's monitored by an Appalachian State librarian until 9 p.m. And then after that, it's monitored by librarians across the state. So okay. that's really cool because you might get a librarian at UNC or you might get one at ECU um, who can give you the, the most basic information. They, they know how to monitor our website. So you, you are always going to get help. It's kind of one of those right away, I need an answer kind of situation. So yeah. I, recommend um, using the chat option and you know texting the library works too they're really quick about returning now inside have you been inside the library before oh uh, yeah yeah I've been in a few times okay, cool. but uh, only a few times <laughs> okay gotcha um, what the spaces and equipment tab is it's for those of you that have been in the library a few times but you might not be aware of what we have um, we have private study rooms that you can book we have um, Quick, quiet study rooms. We have a media viewing room where you can watch DVDs, and we actually have people that check out VHSs, which is kind of funny. And oh, a few wow. rooms um, have uh, international TV. So if you're into those Spanish soap operas like I am, you can come here and watch them for free. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you can book a room. So just by clicking on this tab, you can go ahead and log in with your ASU credentials, and you can book any one of those study rooms. What's cool about uh, the booking system is that it tells you exactly what the room has. So if you are looking for a DVD uh, player, you're looking for a VHS player, you're wanting to watch Telemundo, you want to watch the soccer game between Brazil and Portugal, for some reason it's not on American TV, you can totally book that room that way. Huh. Um, but there's also a lot of quiet reading studies room as well. Now, each floor is kind of a brief breakdown of what's on it. So on the lower level, you know, we have the Writing Center, which is a free resource we really hope that you use. Um, what the Writing Center does is they will edit your papers. They will help you with citation. Um, don't give them the paper the day before it's due. They can't help you, but right, right. give them at least a week's notice. So they're located down there. The tech checkout desk is located there. This is where you can check out GoPro cameras, video equipment. Um, you can check out... Uh, iPads and, and cameras yeah. and laptops and my gosh, it's endless the amount of stuff they oh, have. Um, yeah. You're definitely going to want to check out their website because there's a lot of technology that you as the student can check out for free. Um, there's big printing, poster printing that's done down there, the copiers are down there, and the instruction room. So if you ever have classes where you have to go to the library, your teacher's telling you, um, those classes are down there on the um, lower level. Now, the first floor you're probably familiar with because that's where the library service desk is. All the printers are there. Right, right. Um, that's where you go to you know, get your books and your reserves, things like that, the coffee shop, the lost and found. Um, 
Second floor are study rooms. Third floor is the quiet room and also the digital media studios there. Now what the digital media studio is, is that there are just computers stocked full of all kinds of software that you could possibly think of in addition to editing software. So if you're working on documentaries or videos, there's actually a person on site who can help you with that and you can edit and create your videos using the equipment there. So you actually don't have to buy all that expensive software yourself. You can just come to the library, use it, save it, you know, you can even have your own personal computer that you save it on. But also what I neglected to mention in the lower level is there is a, um, a soundproof booth. So if you're recording music or, you know, you need bagpipes or something, we actually had some, <laughs> um, you can rent out that room as well. So it's pretty cool. And then the fourth floor is the Appalachian Collection, which is the uh, largest checkout special collection of Appalachian culture and folklore and um, even stock car racing. So if you're into NASCAR history and all about that, that's upstairs. But I can also tell you this, Daniel, that is the best place to study. It is qu the quietest place ever. It's super cool and it has the best view on campus. So I highly nice. recommend if you need a place to hide out and study with people not bothering mm -hmm. you, that's the room to go to. Yeah. Yeah, and actually, I've, I've only ever been on the first floor. <laughs> oh, then you, can't, you have to kind of get a tour because it's pretty yeah. Um, Here's, again, that chat box I was telling you about and also this information on printing, copying, and scanning. Now, we do charge for printing. Uh, scanning is of course, free, yeah. Um, but this is really the, the print place to come. And just recently, we were able to print even bigger so we can print poster-sized stuff. So you can get all of your information about printing from this site. And as I mentioned about the tech desk, if you click on this icon, it will take you immediately to the tech center. So this is where the tech desk is. So you can see all the equipment that's available for checkout, what our policies are, how many days you, I mean, look at this stuff. I mean, it amazes me. They get new stuff every day. Um, mm. So all of this is available to you as well, as well as tech instruction. Um, what's really neat about the checkout desk is that they don't just hand you the camera. If you need to know how to use it, they will take the time and they will show you. Um, they're really good about that, and that's that's kind of a rare thing. So they're always on hand. They've also been known to help students with their own personal laptop issues. So they're kind of an easy IT fix for a lot of things. And then again, the digital media studio. Um, which is this tab here, but it tells you what's available, what types of software they have. Um, as they offer a lot of workshops and webinars as well, so you can check out their page if you're interested in learning how to use Final Cut Pro or any of the, the products that they offer. So that's just the actual physical space of the library. Um, there's a tab for books and media, which basically gives you assistance on how to do research. Now we offer quite a few webinars and one-on-one -on -one sessions on how to research. Uh, yeah, that's 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 really that's really what I need. I'm actually I'm going on a study abroad trip the first summer semester uh, for ecology to Australia, and I have two 10-page papers to write that I need 10 sources each. And they can't, none of them can be online sources, so that's really that's really why I signed up for this because I have no idea how to research sources. Simple, you need to contact us. Go to Research Help <laughs> and request a wrap session. Okay. Do it immediately because what this is is this gives you a one-on-one -on -one meeting with a librarian um, at your convenience. You'll have three specific times that you can request, and then they can talk to you about all the resources that we have that are not electronic, that are not internet, and they right. can help you with it. And you can meet with a with a librarian more than once. I I always tell students. I know it sounds weird, but Meet us in every class because each class is going to have different requirements. It's going to have different resources that you need to be made aware of. And the librarian can give you that perspective so that you are not expected to become an expert on the thousands of journals and ebooks and databases and all the things that we have. That's our job. Let us, yeah. let us, you know, filter through, find out what works best for you and, and to show you all of those things. So bookmark the research help because there are several different ways that we can help you, but because you're new, and you've got these papers due, and congratulations on Australia. How cool is that? <laughs> yeah, I'm very, very excited. <laughs> um, definitely make that that request. And um, Okay, so how do I – where's that at? That's under um, research, research and help services. Yeah. Okay. So just click on request a wrap session and then fill out that form, and then you okay. will get a response pretty quick. All right, excellent. So this is – 
and you know the it's not just located on the transfer student guide you're gonna see it's under ask a librarian it's under get help it's under okay. rap sessions I mean it's all over the place um, so there are yeah. several different ways that you can you can get help but as a transfer student you may just want to have this one site have it bookmarked and you can get that same mm. information um, also the same with the digital media studio if you want to get help using that that's also an option and What's really cool is you might want to check out some of our online travel books because we've got a lot of really great books about countries that students visit and it gives you some of those cultural references too. Like right, right. You know, you're, you're not supposed to do certain hand gestures or you have to wear sure, certain sure. and, and, you know, But yeah, yeah. Australia, all you need to do is drink beer and like growth. <laughs> right, yeah. I spent, <laughs> I actually, I actually lived in a uh, hill tribe village in Nepal for uh, six months uh, in, oh. in between school. So I know a lot about, how how that goes oh that's awesome yeah you're gonna you're gonna love it i was obsessed with australia when i was a kid i mean i had posters and i don't know why i have yeah. them on but um yeah i'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, a, I'm an experienced diver and it's always been on my bucket list to uh dive the great barrier reef and i get to spend uh three days so i'll get to do probably <laughs> eight dives plus two night dives i'm pretty excited <laughs> that is amazing are you gonna swim down to that underwater hotel that's supposed to be there i've always wanted to work we're sp we're sp I don't I've never heard of that I, but I know that we're actually spending three days like on the reef like so there's they have some kind of man-made structure that they recently built that that we're actually going to live on for three days. <laughs> you are so lucky. Send us a postcard, will you? <laughs> <laughs> actually, the the nurse the nurse that checked us out uh, gave us um uh his uh little stickers with his address on it he wanted us to send him the postcard so you could put it on his wall oh yeah totally i might give you my contact information before we log sure in. sure send me an email <laughs> <laughs> so the books and media um basically what it does is it just kind of gives you uh, a link to app search so you can do searches directly from the site um here's a, a basic brief introduction on how to use app search how it does what it does um, right now I just typed in Australia and I spelled it wrong so make sure you don't do that <laughs> <laughs> yeah well when I first came down here I thought it was a uh, um, Appalachian state but I got quickly oh, corrected oh, Appalachian. yeah <laughs> yeah, I, just, yeah. <laughs> I, sat, I literally um, was in a meeting before this uh, with a woman in Illinois and she kept saying it wrong and I felt like a local because I was cringing like every time yeah <laughs> Yeah, I, I got it. I got it pretty. I only, I only had to say it a few times before I got I got corrected. Oh yeah, yeah. They're 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 very, they'll do it very nicely, but they'll be very. Yeah. <laughs> so as you can see, we've got quite a bit of information on Australia. So I mean, check this out. There's a, there's a lot of electronic resources that you will be able to access from Australia. You're you're still going to be able to access the library as long as you have a wireless connection. And I'm pretty sure you could even have one at the Great Barrier Reef. Um, you can access the library resources. <laughs> Um, so check out, you know, here's a travel guide about Australia, lots of information. So basically this is how you would do a search using app search. So I just typed in Australia and narrows it down from books and more or articles. You can refine your search if you just want eBooks or streaming video, or like you said, you can't have internet information. So maybe you just right. want to look for books. Um, it also tells you the location. Um, so if you're looking for like special collection or maps or main stats, publishing dates, languages, you can narrow down your searches quite a bit. Now, and, these books, these books are there. Is it a, is it all like kind of online, or is it books that will be, uh, be like physical books that are in the library? And if you look right here, it will tell. And I know it's very small, um, but it will tell you if it's an internet resource, if it's an ebook, if it's a book book, if it's a DVD. Um, okay. Now these, as here, they they blatantly tell you. Now this is. Um, I believe that this is a microfiche because it's in the government section. If you see things look like this, this means they're electronic resources. This is actual book. So here's the small icon for book. It tells you the location of where it is in the library. Now what's really cool is that um, you don't have the time to just kind of come in and browse the stats. What you can do is you can click the request it button and you can log in your bona fides and they can and you can select to hold at the front desk. And what that means huh. is that Students in the library will go collect all of your requests. They'll have it at the library services desk for you. Now, it does take about a day or two because it's students. Yeah, um, right. If you do it and then come in in five minutes, we're going to tell you, oh, it's still on the shelf. <laughs> you know, yeah, but, yeah. 
Um, right. you, can, you can have the students collect all that information and have it waiting for you at the front desk. So okay. that's, uh, that's how you can do it through the request it link. Okay. Um, and then if, and if it's for some reason I need something as an emergency, I can always go and do it myself? Or? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. And you said that you wanted just books. So what I would do is I would do the refine and just click the book. Yeah, book books, books and journals, and it has to be a, a, you know, a, a scientific resource. It just right, it's not your call. Gotcha. And so this narrows it down to just books. And so um, it gives you all, you know, it tells you if it's a children's book because it's in the IMC or if it's on the main stack. So that's that's how you would refine your research just when using okay. this particular site. Um, let me go back to Belk Library. And also when you when you do your uh, wrap session, you know, they'll show you all of that stuff too. So you can, yeah. you can get more help with that. Same with the finding articles. Uh, we do a lot of interlibrary loan, which is fantastic because what that is is that gives you access to 160 library or oh, excuse me, thousands of libraries in 160 different countries. So you would follow these directions. So if there's an article or a book that you desperately need to have but we don't have it, you can put in the request through interlibrary loan and it can be sent to you. Now. Interlibrary loan, because we're getting it from other sources, it can take anywhere from 24 hours to two weeks, depending on where we're getting the item. But you never have to pay for your research. Don't ever go on Amazon and buy a book. Don't do it. You can get that information through us. And so this is the directions on how to do that. Um, this is a nice video on how to find articles using the library catalog, so that can be helpful as well. Although, as the distance education librarian, I've learned that more and more students would rather talk to a human than watch a video. So go back to that wrap session, talk to a human, um, get help. Citing yeah. sources. As transfer students, I think the biggest thing I've heard is that um, citation is huge, and a lot of citations not taught in community colleges, and quite frankly, it's not taught in high schools either. So we have a really great guide on the different types of citations. Um, depending on what your major is, you might be married to just one citation, but in a lot of your gen ed classes, you might be introduced to others. So these kind of give you right. the guidelines. They help you with that to determine, you know, the proper citation format that you need to use for your classes. But also talk to a librarian, talk to the writing center, um, come to our webinars, make an appointment. There's lots of help you can get with that. IMC is uh, the Instructional Materials Center, and this is for mostly our education future teachers. What major are you? I'm, I'm in ecology with a minor in uh, GIS, uh, oh. Geographic Information Systems. Daniel, you're going to have no problem finding a job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's my goal. <laughs> so the Instructional Materials Center is, it's like I said, it's predominantly for education students, but we have a great children's library downstairs. Um, it's a pretty amazing program that we have that helps the future teachers of North Carolina, so it's, it's a pretty cool resource. So if you get a chance to check it out, you should. And then again, like I said, the research helps and services. Um, bookmark this page. This is how you can contact us and, and how you can get help. Now that's just using the transfer student and a library website. Um, I highly encourage you to use it, but most students just kind of go with the front page. And we like our website, but it is it is a process, and we are trying to make it a little bit more intuitive, a lot less wordy. Um, it, it can be confusing, but just some cool things that we have here at the library. Um, we do have reserves, so if you have instructors that put articles and books on reserves, you would come here to the first floor to the library circulation or the services desk, and this is where you would get your reserves. Um, we have tons of movies and DVDs, which are downstairs, so if you are looking for documentaries on Australia or you just want to watch, you know, season five of Game of Thrones, you totally <laughs> can go down there and check it out. Oh, wow. hope that you know, the librarians have returned it. <laughs> so lots of films, lots of DVDs, which are downstairs. Um, so, I, I, so, so I don't have to use Redbox anymore. No, no, you really don't. And uh, we even have Films on Demand, which is this brand new database that we just got in. Um, like like it, Netflix or something. Yeah, it's like academic Netflix. It has it has like History Channel. It has Nash, Nat Geo. I see Ted, Ted, Ted Talks, I can Ted see Talks, on there. BBC. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like I said, it is academic Netflix, and there's all kinds, and I know there's documentaries about Australia and the history of Australia, sure. and all that stuff on here, so um, lots of really cool things, and other databases that we have that a lot of people aren't familiar with is um, we actually, through if you click on A, we have <laughs> to um, Ancestry.com that you can go and check out genealogy yeah. and oh. your family information. Um, and, all, and, all, and all this is free? or All this is free. It's completely free. And you get there from the library website. 
Um, so just type in Ancestry.com or Ancestry Library, and it'll show up, or you could just go look at the databases and click on A. Um, another really cool database we have is Mango Languages. It's very much like um, Rosetta Stone, except it, I think it's a lot more user-friendly. And it's yeah. really so there's over 65 languages that you can learn using this, which is pretty awesome. Um, they even have do you, do you have, do you, do you have Viet, uh, Vietnamese? I've been trying to learn Vietnamese, and it's yep. been very difficult. Oh, you got it. <laughs> um, it's hilarious. They even have pirate. So if you want to learn how to <laughs> pirate, you totally can. But the way it works is really cool. It's Like I said, it's, it's very cultural. So I, I can just give you kind of a brief how it works. Um, my daughter uses this to learn Italian, and it's hilarious because she's like, ciao, mama, and I don't speak yeah. Italian. But you can create your own account and save um, your sessions as you go. But uh, here's how it works. So we'll start with the, the first chapter, lesson one. Check out the following conversation. By the end of this chapter, you're going to sound smarter than ever. <laughs> Cô khỏe không? Tôi khỏe. Cảm ơn anh. Còn anh thế nào? Rất khỏe. Cảm ơn cô. Trời hơi nóng, phải không? Dạ. So you kind of get... is a tonal okay. language that has six tones. Mid-level, high-rising, low... This is how you say hi to a female. Chào cô. So as you can see, it kind of breaks down the language, gives you some cultural info. And what I recommend in using this um, is that you can just go in as a guest. But if you looked at the um, notice, you can log, you can create your own profile. It's free. Okay. And what it does is it will save your progress. So you can always log back in. And you can learn all 65 languages as long as you're a student here, if that's what you want. you know. But um, yeah. you can just go in and just play with it or just create create the login and then you you can download it as an app on your phone you can take it with you wherever you go um, you, it downloads uh, very well on smartphones and iPads uh, like I said my daughter carries it around and learns Italian although I don't know we're not Italian we're Irish but Gaelic's really <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's a pretty amazing database that we have so we, we have you know we've got the basic stuff that you always use like JSTOR and academic search complete but we also have a lot of really cool um, we got databases just based on primary sources, on statistics and data. We have free images, music, and video that you can use for projects. Now, this is the copyright-free, plagiarism-free, you know, kind of um, stuff that you can use within your projects just for educational purposes. But, you know, always cite, never forget, um, right, links right. to government information, and that pop-up chat librarian will come up in just about every page. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, the library is amazing, and we have so much cool things and friendly people. Yeah. And um, just this, like I said, this was just kind of a brief introduction orientation. But do you have right, any no, questions? Yeah. 